Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Summer Star 2022 Virtual Summit. My name is Maria Cooper. I am the owner of Above and Beyond Productions, and I will be behind the scenes running today's summit. But first, it is my pleasure to introduce to you my good friend and colleague, Rebecca Hall Greider. Rebecca Hall Greider is the CEO of RHG Media Productions and the founder of Your Purpose Driven Practice, a global influencer, a number one international best selling author publisher that has helped over 900 authors become bestsellers, radio show host, an empowerment leader, and the creator of the Speaker Talent Search. Rebecca has personally contributed to 40 plus published books, multiple magazines, and has been quoted in major media the, like the Huffington Post, ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, and Thrive Global. Today, she wants you to be seen and heard and shine. It's my pleasure to introduce to you, Rebecca Hall Greider. Thank you, Maria, for the beautiful introduction. So excited to be here with all of you as we come together and we talk about how do we show up fully in our lives? I think sometimes we treat life a little bit like a dress rehearsal. Like, next time I'll show up. Next time I'll bring everything. Or... Someday, we say that a lot, someday I'll do this or that. And I want to challenge you today to shift that someday to today, because we have today, it matters how you show up every day, whether you're on stage or you're standing in a line or you're on a call, you have an opportunity to shine, to share your gifts, your talents, who you are out in the world. So I encourage you to do that mindfully, powerfully, purposely, because you're absolutely needed. There's no one else just like you. And just like this beautiful garden behind me of these beautiful, bright flowers, we each get to be a beautiful, bright flower in the garden of life. And even though these flowers are all similar, as you look in color, in reality, we all have different color and fragrance and texture that we bring to the garden of life. And when we shrink back, we don't show up. We're still occupying the same space, but the garden becomes less vibrant. So today we've gathered an amazing collection of experts to support you to really step forward, to shine, to share your gifts and talents out in the world. That's how we make a difference. Heart by heart, life by life, sharing the gift of who we are more authentically and fully in the world. So I've got some tools to support you. I don't know if anyone out there likes tools. I know I do. It helps me hold information because we hope to share a lot of insights and powerful information with you today. So I have a tool that can help you capture this. So give me just a moment and I am going to share an image with you. So while I'm getting this image, I'm gonna encourage you to have paper and pen ready or your favorite writing utensil. We are recording today, but I want you to capture those insights real time as they touch your heart and spirit. So you're ready for my magical, powerful template and tool to support you? Are you sure? Yay, okay, <laughs> I see my panel is ready. I love that, yay, perfect, perfect. So I'm gonna share it with you. Oops. Let me share it with you. There we go. Can we see the flower template? Okay, I'm getting nods. Perfect. So here's what I want you to do with this beautiful image is I want you to put your name in the center. So if you can draw this, I tried to keep it simple. So for those of you with paper and pen can draw. So if you can draw a flower with five petals, the five petals represent our five speakers. So speaker one, two, three, four, five. But there's this open space in the center and that's for you. Put your name. That's what this event is about is you and supporting you. So we're all coming around to support you. And I want to remember, I want you to remember that you are the center. We're here supporting you. So as we go through our time together today, and we have speaker one, speaker two, speaker three. 
at the end of each presentation, I'm going to invite you to take a moment and write a couple of thoughts or an image in the petal associated with that speaker. So by the end of our event today, you will have this beautiful chart representing our time together today. And I want you to specifically listen for insights, tips, and tools that are going to support you because I want to empower you to take action, not someday, but today to be able to step forward powerfully. So this becomes a living, breathing, growing flower. I want you to notice as I scroll down, it's planted, it's growing just like you. So what are some of these tips and tools that can help you grow those roots to go deep? And a couple of like our leaves, a couple of great insights that can carry forward and support, or maybe this is an extra credit. I love this extra credit bonus challenge that can support you as you're stretching your leaves a little bit more out in the world. So I hope this chart is helpful. So if you take a moment and you, and I can send this to you, if anyone wants me to send you a chart, just reach out. I'll be happy to do so. I'll give my contact information a little bit later on. But for now, if you can draw on a piece of paper, a circle with five petals around it and the stem, don't forget the stem because it is a planted flower. We're not operating in a vacuum. So planted flower, they are gonna be growing deep roots today as we support you on your journey. Beautiful. So that's my super special tool to help support you holding all of this beautiful information. But if we're gonna be open and available to receive all this information, we've gotta make sure that we're not distracted. Sometimes we just show up, like check it off the list, I'm there physically, but our mind is elsewhere, we're distracted, we're multitasking. I'm going to encourage you today to carve out this time for you. Choose to be fully present. You said yes when you signed up. When this email or the announcement came across your field, you said yes. And then when the confirmation was sent, you said yes again. And then today, as you show up, you said yes again. And we're saying yes back to you, supporting you. So really choose to be present this is your time. We honor that. And we're here together to support you. So you don't have to do anything. You get to be present, open, and ready to receive. Beautiful. So as you are breathing and being open and ready to receive, I want to encourage you to take a breath. Slowing down becoming present, remembering that this is your time. And in fact, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. When I'm at an in-person event, I always look out in the audience and if I see eyes open, I let them know I see them. <laughs> so pretend I'm looking out at you and if you're not having your eyes closed, I see you. And I invite you to remind yourself you're safe. You're not going to miss anything. Closing your eyes just gives you a moment to focus in and not be distracted. And as you're breathing, eyes closed, thinking about bringing that someday to today, really stepping forward in your life, being seen, being heard, moving forward those things that matter most today. What is it you need? What is it that will support you, encourage you, empower you? What do you need today, real time? And just receive. See what pops up. Sometimes it's a sound, a memory, a reminder, an image. Use all your senses and just see what it is that you need and are willing to receive because you absolutely have choice. Wonderful. Let's take another breath. Come back into the room, eyes open, fully present, and take a moment and write down what was laid on your heart. Let's capture it on your beautiful flower that hopefully you've already started drawing on. Let's see if I can get that in the screen. 
anyway, your beautiful flower <laughs> that you started writing on. Take a moment and write down your intention. Notice the open space near the top. Write down what was laid on your heart. Let's stop it from swirling around in you and start to interact with it. Because today we're committed in helping move that forward for you. And what's beautiful about stopping and identifying what it is you need, you don't have to figure out the how. You just get to identify what it is you need and be open to receiving Sometimes it's even better not to figure out the how, because sometimes we can miss the way that needs being answered because we think it's going to come a certain way. But if we can be open, it's amazing how that need can move forward in unexpected and wonderful ways if we're open and ready to receive. So I invite you to embrace that today. Beautiful. So as I was preparing, I had um, a reflection that was really touched my heart that I wanted to share with us today. So I'm going to open up the book. It's called Empowering You, Transforming Lives. Can't quite get it in the camera. There we go. You can see all the marks. And um, some of our authors are, and our uh, experts today were actually part of this book. It's a daily inspiration book. Yep, Mary, exactly. And here's what I wanted to share as I was thinking about as we're choosing to share and to shine out, I thought this was a powerful excerpt that I wanted to share with you. And this is part of the Daily Inspiration by Teresa Halley Howard, who is an empowerment leader. And she shares, as the sun grows hotter and daylight longer, we have time to reflect and soak up all the possibilities. You have an opportunity to shine daily. Take the chance every day to be the light. You must choose. It does not happen by chance or happenstance. It is a choice. So today, make the decision to be the light in darkness. And something I've discovered about darkness is light actually shines even brighter in those times. And we have an opportunity to be that light. We have that opportunity every single day to mindfully, purposely shine out and be that light for ourselves and for others. So I'm going to encourage you as we go through today and we're filling out your flower, think of ways that you can shine and share out more of you because it's a choice and we can choose every single day. And my challenge is that by the end of today, I'm going to circle back on this. I want to encourage you to write down a couple of steps you can start to implement today, real time. And that might be reaching out to one of our experts. I might be implementing something that they share and offer with you. It might be something else that's laid on your heart or prompted as we're sharing with you. So be listening, looking for those opportunities because we know that you are here on purpose. We know you joined us today on purpose. There's a reason you're here. And that's because there's something here for you. So be listening with your ears and heart open, ready to receive everything that can serve and support you today. Are we in agreement? Okay, fabulous. So just making sure I didn't miss any of the powerful tools <laughs> that I wanted to share with you today and tips. One of the things I love about this group that has come together is we're all very different. There's a common theme that we believe in you, that we want to make a positive difference in the world, that we are called to do that. But we all do it differently through different experiences, talents, voices, skills, and background. So I hope that you enjoy the diversity of experience and wisdom and insight that is going to be presented today. So lean into those voices and things that touch you. Listen to the ones that stretch you. Lean into everything that is here for you today because it's been designed especially for you. So when you picture it wrapped in a beautiful bow, you are unwrapping that gift and you get to enjoy the experience of today. And we get to enjoy the experience of you today. So not only are we going to be sharing out, you have an opportunity to send us messages. This is live streamed on YouTube. It's live streamed on Facebook. So if you want to ask a question 
make a comment. We have our team watching and I'll be checking that periodically so you can get real-time support and real answers. So use that, lean in, we are here for you. Excited for the journey. Welcome everyone to a summer star. And are we ready to start? I love all the hands waving. Yay. Okay, good. I'm picturing everyone out there nodding, smiling, and hopefully hands raised as well. So it's my privilege and honor to introduce our first amazing guest. Uh, we have been friends for a long, long time. We've been on this journey together for many, many years. I love her. I know that you will love her as well. So let me introduce my good friend, Mary E. Knippel. She is a book mentor, international speaker, and a workshop facilitator. She's a number one international bestselling author. She mentors women to craft their transformational stories into a book to grow their business. Drawing on her 35 years of experience as a journalist, she has developed a knack for helping you shine. She is on a mission to help you claim your story. Please lean in and warmly welcome the powerful and dynamic Mary E. Knipple. Yay! Welcome! Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. You are so welcome. Thrilled to have you joining us today. And I wanted to start our conversation with why? Why is this work of helping people claim their story, why is that personally so important to you? Oh, that it's just been my, my mission since I've always known that. The answer is at the end of the pen. I've been keeping a journal since I was 11. That's the first thing I would encourage people to do is to have a conversation with yourself on the page. And everything I've done personally and professionally has started in my journal. And that is how you get to know yourself and to figure out what do I want to do next? What didn't work and what, what could I try next? And being able to articulate on the page first, so then you could do it in a talk, you could do it in a conversation. And knowing that you are, your story is here to make a difference to somebody else. I firmly believe that we have wisdom that we are here to impart. And if we don't share that particular story, somebody else isn't gonna have the life they're designed to have because we were silent. Thank you for sharing. Very powerful. I love that. You know, a good, a good friend of mine, um, Kathy Davis says, wisdom not shared is lost forever. And to me, that just reminds me so much. And it's so true. Like we have a responsibility. I hope that people feel that, that pull, that conviction. And I'm curious, and I love that the answer is at the end of the pen. I love that because <laughs> we make it harder than it needs to be, I think sometimes. And I love that helps us capture our story, capture our wisdom. Do you find it also creates a journey for the person with the pen as well. A journey for the person with the pen, absolutely. I mean, yeah. when I encounter anybody who says, I'm not a writer, <laughs> I, will, I will say, I beg to differ <laughs> because we all have that capacity. Writing is, a, is not something that you have to study with a guru, that you have to travel to the ends of the earth. Um, you, you have the the tools right there, that's my secret weapon is the pen and you know, having you know, just a little journal that's available and being able to sit down with that journal at least five minutes every day to uncover that story or work through that, that problem that you want to find a solution for to wrestle with, how do I talk to this person? How do I move? from what life has brought me today to what I want to do next. Mm. And using that simple tool can take you on such an incredible journey around the world and back to your heart. Mm. Beautiful. 
Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. And I know many times on stage when I first started speaking, I would share, <laughs> you were there. <laughs> I'm not an author. I'm not a writer. That's not what I do. And I remember many times he came up to me after and he said, <laughs> Rebecca, mm-hmm. you are, please don't say that. <laughs> and I loved how much love and care. So you, you walk your talk and come alongside and empower us on our journey. And I just so appreciate that about you. So I wanted to discover, you shared a little bit about how important it is that we share that wisdom learned. And I think sometimes we don't feel like our story is enough. It's not special enough. It's not transformational. It's just my thing. And why does it make a difference? What's your response to that? It just breaks my heart that there are so many women that have discounted, you know, well, it's so ordinary. Why why would anybody want to hear from me? I'm um, this, it, every, ha, everybody has something that is theirs alone. Your story matters because it's your story and you're the only one that can tell it from the inside. And I get emotional because I'm so passionate about this. You, you are the author of your life. You are orchestrating this. And uh, we all have these life experiences that are ours alone and how we cope with them is unique to us. And when we share our, our unique story, it can benefit somebody else. They may not, probably not, have the same details as us, but they will identify. They, they will see that we have empathy for what they are going through. Sometimes there are similar Um, situations that are going on, like we've all experienced COVID in some way, not the same way, but we all had to pivot. And what I say to that is women have been pivoting for, uh, for generations, but but since time immemorial. So that's not, not something to point at, but we have common things that have happened to us. And when we talk about our specific circumstances, it gives an opening for other women to go, she gets me, she understands. I could learn from how, what she did next. And look at where she is now. I wanna be there. So when we, when we think about what is a transformational story, it's, it's being able to pinpoint that, that traject, that story that was the trajectory of how we changed from who we were to where we, who we are, that second time, third time you were diagnosed with breast cancer, the the first time you become a grandma and how your life changes. When you lose a job, your husband loses a job, you have to move, you have to move a second time. What you did after that diagnosis, that will form letter saying you don't have a job, that what you did next and how you showed up in the world, being the leader of yourself, being the leader of your family, being the leader of your business, those, that's your transformational story. And we have many of them. It just depends on who's in front of you right now that draws out the story that is prominent for you to share at that moment. And that's why I love to do is to, is to help women discover the story that needs to be told right now. So I can feel people leaning in and feeling that call, but then they stare at that blank piece of paper and they're just not quite sure what to do. What would you suggest? How can they get started? They're willing to say yes, but they need a little support with the how. The how is showing up at the page making a, an appointment with yourself, just the way, okay, I want to start jogging. What do you do? You walk around the block. You don't put on your sneakers and go, I'm going for 10 miles. You make an appointment with yourself, five minutes. I'm going to sit down at this page. And what I usually do is I write the date. I light a candle and play the same music. You don't have to do that. But the point is, that you make an appointment with yourself, you show up on the page, you set the timer for five minutes, and then you ask a question, 
What does my heart want me to know right now? Do you want to write a book? What does my book want me to know right now? You ask a question and then answer it for five minutes. And don't worry about your handwriting. Don't worry, did I spell this right? Don't worry if you punk, you're using the correct punctuation. These messages are for you from your heart. And the most important thing, or one of the most important things is that you use pen and paper. <laughs> that connection between your hand and your heart is so strong when you're doing it by hand. Mm. Beautiful. So I'm gonna encourage everybody to take a moment on your flower chart, just put a couple of thoughts of things that are touching your heart that Mary has shared with us. And I want to encourage scheduling a time, extra credit bonus opportunity in your calendar for your five minutes. Maybe even do it today. You could put, give yourself five minutes after today's event to transition, to breathe, and to write and see what touched you, what impacted you. I want us to start applying these things. I want you to connect with your heart and all those messages that are wanting to come out. And I love what Mary has shared with us. Such great insight, powerful information, and very doable steps. I love that. What a powerful combination, Mary. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And as you reflect back on our conversation, is there anything specifically that's just on your heart, something that you want to make sure that you share with our listeners today and our viewers. Oh, thank you for the opportunity. I, I just want to share that my mission is to help women's voices be heard. And as we heard in, in the introduction that um, you have been in numerous anthologies as well as being a compiler. And I have been in numerous anthologies as well and I'm stepping into being a compiler and Focusing, I'm focusing on women's telling their transformational story. And so I, um, I would love to talk to anybody who is ready to have a conversation uh, about having their voice be heard in an anthology. Because it's an opportunity to write in, in community. And I specialize in people who don't think they have a story. I'll help you find it because I know it's there. Beautiful. And do you mind sharing just for our listeners that anthology is a newer term for them? Do you mind explaining what that is and um, oh. what that might entail if they feel like, yes, I, I want Mary to help me find my story and bring it forward. And I like that anthology thing, whatever it is. So do you mind explaining a little bit so of what it is? Writing a whole book is intimidating for a lot of people, including me. <laughs> and I have written my own book. But it's an anthology, a co-author book, a collaboration book. You have multiple authors that are contributing a chapter instead of every, you, you alone being responsible for the entire book. And that's what I said, writing in community that we all have our own perspective. And the beautiful thing is women telling their transformational stories, they weave together. We layer on the, the emotions and the lessons that we have learned. We, there's, there's not a specific agenda that goes out. It's just the, the like-minded people will come forward to say, I wanna be part of this project. And so you get to hear multiple voices with the same, um, emphasis of we want to offer you hope. We want to offer you inspiration. We're sharing information about what happened to us and how we moved through it and what we're doing now. Beautiful. So I love that anthology, collaboration book, co-author book. It's the same. It's multiple authors with a heart to share their story. Mm, beautiful. I'm excited you're leading one of these powerful projects and bringing it forward. And everyone, you're in amazing hands. I hope you can feel Mary's heart 
in really helping you bring your story and message forward. So if you're feeling that pull, I encourage you to check it out, learn more. Anthologies are a really powerful way to bring your message forward and, and to reach people one chapter at a time in community, which is just brilliant. So love, love, love that. So with that, I would love for you to share, Mary, um, I know you've got a couple of things for us. So I'd love for you to share your contact information so everybody have your paper and pen ready so you can write down contact information so you can reach out to Mary. And she has a gift, which is exciting. So Mary, can you share about your free gift and your contact information? Yes. So besides encouraging you to start three minutes, uh, five minutes a day, um, my, my free gift is three steps to new author success. Hmm. Um, and um, the link is three steps, three, the numeral three, three steps to new author success forward uh, dot com forward slash freebie. And if someone just wants to ask me a question, they can ask me at mary at your writing dot com. And I would love to encourage you to be able to get started on knowing your story so that you can reach the people who need you and make the impact that you are meant to have. Wonderful. Mary, thank you so much for your heart, for your generosity, absolutely. And for your leaning into all of us and encouraging us and empowering us and challenging us to find our story and to share it with the world. So thank you so much, Mary. We appreciate thank you. It. Absolutely. So listeners and viewers, so depending on if you're listening or viewing um, or both, I want to encourage you just to take a moment and process what has been shared. Look at your notes that you've taken. And if you have any questions or things that you want to send in for Mary, I'm going to give you just a moment to do so. And I'm checking. It's like we're all still writing and reflecting, so that's perfect. So we can take questions a little bit later on. Thank you again, Mary. I just so appreciate you being part of today. <laughs> and with that, I'm excited to introduce our next amazing guest. I know you're also going to love her heart and her spirit. It's Reverend Susie Wu. She is a spiritual healer, astrologer, teacher, and expert in conscious energy. She's a quantum mechanics special and inspirational spiritual leader. After escaping a 22-year violent marriage, she did a lot of deep work to understand why. And now she uses what she learned to make a difference worldwide. In fact, she's on a mission to correct mental, spiritual, and physical imbalances. Please lean in and warmly welcome the powerful, mission-driven Reverend Susie Wu to their show. Welcome! Woo! <laughs> I can't help but to not do a little woo! I love it. <laughs> we all need a little bit of woo in our life, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So on um, brand, perfect, perfect, perfect. I love it. <laughs> welcome. I'm excited to have you joining us today. And I love your background. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm enjoying that. Just beautiful. It has a nice feel to it. And I wanted to start with why is this work about correcting these imbalances around the world and bringing a little bit of woo in? Why is that personally so important to you? Because um, I was disempowered. And um, when I was 17, I fell into the arms of somebody who ended up manipulating and controlling me and um it just happened so eventual that I kind of didn't see it coming and so once I eventually did I wanted to dig and understand what was so wrong with me that I fell into a relationship like that and then stayed for 22 years and I've learned so much and so I want to share my findings with others, what worked for me. And then I also do retreats to bring people together so we can share of like mine. And I also just want to side note, I love Mary. I think she's awesome. 
and I have also done two collaborations. So I, I'm definitely going to connect with Mary, just by I mentioned that. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Already connections are happening. It's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And I love your willingness to um, go deep and help others in this way too. Sometimes, you know, when we go on our journey, it can be difficult to go back or we don't necessarily want to. We want to just move forward. And I love that you're moving forward and reaching back and helping so many people heal in, in so many different powerful ways. And I just celebrate that work. And I thank you for doing that and bringing that to the world. And I wanted to have you share a little bit because there's some of these things I mentioned, even in your intro, may be new to some of our um, audiences members. And so can you explain what quantum mechanics is and how does this heal people? What does this have to do with us? One of my favorite topics so we actually live in a holographic universe. And when you imagine things, it's not coming from nowhere. And so this is my favorite example. I was seeing a client and she was on the table and I work with my guidance, my spiritual guidance. And I have learned to completely just step aside and whatever comes through, I will honor that. So she's on my table and I start to get a message that she has a dry hip joint like a hip socket like and I'm working with my eyes closed clients on the table and I say okay what do I do and behind my closed eyes a giant snail lands on my hand and I ask what do I do with the snail and they say a snail makes goo take the goo and slather it all over the hip and so I had done that and after we finished the session, she had commented to me, I didn't tell you about this, but I could barely make it up the seven stairs to get here. I had this hip thing going on and I feel terrific. And so it's using your imagination to manifest your reality. I recently started to say, life is like Minecraft. You are always manifesting your world and your reality. So we can retrain um subconsciously we could retrain from the old conditioning the limitations restrictions limiting beliefs to say you're not all that you gotta bust out of the box be who you are authentically here to be be who you were created to be and release who you've become conditioned to be and so all of this stuff happens behind the scenes while a client is laying on the table or even in East Johanga, if there is such a, I'm sure there is such a place. And so how that works is I, for me, I bring up that person's hologram. So I am an IT nerd. And so I think of a person like an IP address. So I'll say, show me Tom Jones. No, I can't. I can't, I hear his music. Show me Tom Jones in Kenya. And I will connect to his IP address and I will start to see a hologram and there might be some spots or or smudges or different colors going on in the system. And I just start cleaning it, clean, cleaning it all up. And as shocking as it is, it works. And so this has shrunk tumors, um, prevented surgery. And, and that's like all the way in Germany. And they wrote me reviews too. <laughs> Beautiful. No, I, I love it. And I'm just kind of giving people an opportunity to hear a little bit of how we can connect in and how these things and the information can come through. And I love that, that you think of people as IP addresses. I haven't heard that before. That's a beautiful, <laughs> that's an interesting way to explain that, how you connect in and pull up their unique IP address to um, connect in with them and their energy and their field, and then be able to support them in a powerful way. So I love that. And, and so if I tie this back into Summer Star, why is it important that we get support in those areas and, and with our field and um, that we experience healing release. So the smudges and things are cleaned up. Why is that important? Why does that matter for us? Yeah. So that we can be who we were created to be. We come in to this world with, in astrology, it would be our South Node. So we have, it's, it has to do with past life karma, stuff that didn't get resolved. And we also have a Chiron, which is the wounded healer. So everybody comes in with these kind of burdens already. And we have to like figure it out. We have to navigate and figure it out. So 
when we are not living in a place of alignment, that is whatever area of life that's in is going to bleed into other areas. So for, for example, my last, the last time I had a regular job, it was at the IRS. So no creativity, no fun. And I thought it would be great because it was a help desk job. I'm like, oh, I get to help people, but people didn't want to work there. So it wasn't my cup of tea. But if I would have stayed in that job, see, the wrong reason is, well, it pays the bills. Okay, that's the wrong reason. That's a root chakra imbalance. And so over a period of time, what would happen? And most people have a, an imbalance in the in their root chakra, and that is survival. If you and you think about it as a foundation to your home, concrete foundation. So if you've got a wonky foundation, in fact, that root chakra starts to be formed when you're still in utero. So if your biological mother was not in a good way, if there was drug abuse, a lot of fighting, she had a lot of stress, that is getting pumped into your nervous system before you even have a fighting chance. So as an adult, the way the result of that is I'm not enough. I work and I work and I work and I work. And no matter what, it's just never enough. And then that will eventually lead to a wonky sacral chakra and, and it just continues from there. So we all come in with these predisposed woundings that if we don't resolve them, we're gonna get similar circumstances that repeat over and over and over and over. So whether it's somebody who can't hold down a job, it's not everybody else. Or if everybody that I date treats me this way, it's not everybody else. You have to find the common denominator, right? And it's gonna be you. It's not gonna be everybody else. Then that's where you start to go deep into yourself and you look for what hurts. And you could quickly find out by your own body because we store those things in our bodies. So just a quick example with the root chakra, it's gonna be the lower back, sciatica, anything from the waist down. You can blow out a knee or twist an ankle. Those are all root chakra things. And each of your main chakras correlates with the body part and a note of the alphabet. And then we can get into sound healing and all that other kind of stuff. All, all that good stuff. <laughs> I love it. And I love oh, that you stuff. love what you do <laughs> and you found your calling in your space. And I was just picturing me. I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't see her at the IRS. That was so interesting no. to discover <laughs> and, and learn. And I'm so glad you found, found your space. And so some of what I'm hearing is that these, these woundings and these things that we come forward, those smudges that, that we have, um, keep us from shining. It can keep us in patterns that aren't supportive. It can keep us creating things that are not really what we want to bring to the world. So by healing those things and getting those things in alignment with who we truly are and who we want to become, it sounds like then we can start to create that life that we want to create kind of from the inside out. Is that a correct? It has to be. It has mm -hmm. to be. So it's kind of like, telling somebody else's joke. It just doesn't feel right. It doesn't work. And so one of the kind of like a motto or a tagline that I created is find yourself, love yourself, be yourself and be mm. proud. And so when I first got out of my abusive marriage, I had no clue who I was because I was so busy my entire life being who everybody else wanted me to be. So this is, this fits for most people. If you're wearing 112 hats because you're this way to your mom, this way to your boss, this way to your sibling, your neighbor. But to imagine just being one person and wearing one hat and being authentically yourself all the time, your life gets so much easier. And everything does. And when you learn how to go into your heart and say, you know what? I am pretty cool. And you, and you actually start to believe that and you see your own new uniqueness and you learn how to embrace that and, and have healthy boundaries. And so it is, you know what? It's okay if I'm not everybody's cup of tea because if everybody was the same, it'd be a pretty, pretty gray kind of a world and like a bunch of Squidwards, you know? It's like, be a SpongeBob in a world of Squidwards. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Well, I'd love for you to, is there, as we're kind of reflecting back on, on what you've shared, is there something on your heart that you want to share with us or show us or um, bring to our viewers and listeners today? Yeah, the big capital letter words is you matter. 
you matter. The things that bring you joy, it's not up to others to judge that and accept that. You go ahead and you do it anyway. If you like to collect beach glass, if you like to, whatever it is that you love to do, do that because you came into this lifetime having interests. And if somebody else says, oh, well, collecting crystals, that's woo woo and stupid, that's okay. You don't need to waste your time trying to convince somebody why you like doing what you like. That is authentically your own thing. And you have that right. So please stand in your power. If something doesn't feel right, then you have to step aside and say, am I living my for my highest good? Is this in alignment with who I am as a soul? Is this bringing me joy? And if not, take a hike, set a healthy boundary and don't feel bad. And I also would like to say, don't keep looking over your shoulder because you're not there anymore. You're here. And if you keep looking in the past, that's depression. If you keep looking forward, that's anxiety. You want to be in the now. And that is why it is called a present because it is a gift to learn how to be present with yourself and live in a state of compassion for yourself first, and then it will easily turn to others. So you won't look at others and judge them. Oh, da, 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 da. Instead, you're gonna see the light in them. Even if they have hurt you, it's understanding, wow, they must have been pretty damaged to behave that way and to not take that personally. Stand in your own power, observe others as they are, and you don't wanna try to change others and love yourself wholly and completely. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your Thank spirit, you. your passion for this, your insight, um, the wisdom that you're sharing with us. I want to give everyone a moment to pull out their flower chart and to write down some of the aha, some of the things that have shifted in your sharing, things that they want to remember. And I love that, the gift of today, the present. It's named that on purpose. Beautiful. <laughs> I love that. And it looks like we have a question. So while everyone's taking a moment to write down their thoughts, um, I'm going to read the question so I can articulate it. Oh, great question. Okay. So the question for you, Susie, is how do I find out more about the connection between my root chakra and physical problems? Extremely connected. So wherever that, so if you have a pain from the waist down, then you want to look at where are you not, where are you feeling not enough? Where is my not enoughness? Can I, am I earning enough money? And then some, so it's even not even all the way to abundance, but you want extra at the end of the day. And so here's a, here's a, what you can do is imagine the beautiful color red and you breathe in red and see the base of your tailbone, the base of your spine, that whole energy fill up with beautiful, beautiful red and think I am enough in your mind as you're doing this breathing. I am enough. I have enough. I matter. I work with the consciousness of earth who provides everything that I need to flourish. All of my needs will always be met because I am an extension of creator energy. And that is just a real short little something to help you to focus and center and bring love and healing into the root chakra, which is directly related to your physicality. Mm, beautiful. Thank you, Susie. I, I yes, so thank you for that question. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I just, I love the important information and wisdom and insight you're giving us and even how to connect in and shift that I'm not enough and our root chakra. Um, just, I really appreciate that so much. And I wanted to have you share your contact information, how people can go deeper. And I know you have a special offer as well. So I wanted to have you share. <laughs> Excellent. My Website is my name with a hyphen. So it's wwwsuzy woo It's S-U-Z-Y-W-O-O.com. All of what I do is there. And I do this work locally in Ellicottville, New York and around the world. Uh, actually, that's all the contact information. It's all there. My email is hello <laughs> at suzy wocom Beautiful. And then you had a special offer you wanted to extend to our viewers today? And for our viewers today, I am extending a 10% off any of my services. 
It could be your birth chart. It could be um, an energy reading. It could be a healing section. Your choice. Anything on my service is 10% off. Oh, I love that. And should they just say they watch today? They watch the summer oh, start? Yeah. Summer? Okay. Yep. You'll oh, send me an email on a contact form and and we'll and mention you that you could also use RHG. And um, I will be happy to honor that. Now I do read all of my email personally. Um, the people that work for me work in the shop. I own a crystal store also in Ellicott Bill. I'm all about the, the spiritual tools. It's kind of like a Home Depot for the soul. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Reverend Zizi Wu, for sharing and for um, bringing your heart and your spirit to our time together today. I just so appreciate that. And thank I'm going to give you. everyone another moment to just um, write down any final thoughts. Hopefully, I wrote down her contact information and what an amazing opportunity. And I love that Home Depot for the soul. Is that what you said? So Home Depot for for the soul, yeah. So yeah. yeah, I like that. That's very yeah. catchy. In closing, I just would like to suggest to everybody you want to live a life that makes you want to say, Wow. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we can all practice that. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Beautiful. We're about putting things into action. I love that today, not someday. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, I'm excited to introduce our next amazing guest, Reverend Dr. Norma Edwards. She is the founder of Reprogram Your Life, LLC, an author, a change agent, NLP certified life coach, and a wisdom keeper. I love that. Wisdom keeper and sharer, I would say. She doesn't just keep it. She shares it as well. Wisdom keeper and sharer. She, emerging from a near-death experience over 50 years ago, led her to, through a purpose-driven life, to become a recognized expert in merging spiritual principles into clinical practices. She is passionate about helping you reprogram your life. Please lean in and warmly welcome the powerful and dynamic Reverend Dr. Norma Edwards. Welcome. Well, thank you so much. I'm not so sure that I've ever been welcomed so enthusiastically. <laughs> oh, you. I love it. Well, hands up. We're excited to have you joining us. We're bringing the woo, as, as Reverend Susie would say. So excited to, to welcome you wholeheartedly to Summer Star. And it's a perfect way for us to step into that energy too, you know, taking center stage ourselves as we lean into each other and celebrate. And there's joy in that and being able to lift each other up. So I'm very, very excited, very wholeheartedly welcoming you to our event today and excited to hear what is on your heart to share. And I'd like to start with why, why is this work that you do so important to you? Because I stepped out of a dark tunnel during my near-death experience and into an unbelievably powerful, magnetic, magical stream of white light. Mm. And that white light represented love. And for those brief moments that I was on the other side, I came to know and understand that we are all love, we are all light, we are one. And then they, they, they did to me, like they did to most others, the most undignified thing is to then <laughs> slam us back into our bodies and send us back, you see. But upon the return, we came back with the memory, you know, the memory of the love, the light. This is who we are, the oneness that we are a piece of, a part of the universe. But that the energy that is life is eternal. And, and of course, that excited me. It, it opened me up to, to, to embracing and seeing so many things from different perspectives. And for all of my life since then, it has been my desire and my goal to share that 
You know, there's a statement out there that says, who feels it knows it. That's quite true. One of the things I've been experiencing over the past 50 years is that I have to become really, really creative to help people to feel it. See, to read about it is one thing. Mm -hmm. So to even have a discussion about it is the other, but to kind of feel it, feel the essence of who we are, because the essence of who we are is pure, absolute love. Mm -hmm. And when we get that, there is no holding back. Oh. And I think this forum that you've been, that you've put together is, is very, very needed because we are the women on the planet. We are the females on the planet. We are the ones to whom uh, it is given the, the absolute joy of receiving, receiving the seed, nurturing the seed from the inside out, and then giving to the world the gift of the seed. But when we can really begin to understand that we are light and we are love, just think of um, how much more beautifully we will nurture. Yeah, and we will carry and we will deliver to the world uh, seeds of light. And this, is, this has been my journey for the last well over 50 years. Thank you for sharing. And I love how you talked about feeling, that helping people experience, feel that. Do you have a tip or a suggestion on how today we could just stop for a moment and feel that love? First of all, I think we have to be committed. Mm. Everybody wants to be loved and everybody wants to feel love and experience love. But we have to kind of make a commitment. Develop 15 minutes, take 15 minutes of your life, five minutes of your life, you know? I say sometimes to some of my clients, so you're very, very busy. When you leave the house, give yourself an extra 10 minutes. And as you get into the car, you put the key in the ignition, you turn the car on and you turn your eyes heavenwards. And just take that moment to feel the fact that I am a part of this beautiful light. I am a part of the sunrise. I'm a part of the sunset. Therefore, there is nothing in the world that I want to accomplish that is impossible. Just those few moments, you know, that's a moment because people, people claim they're so busy. And I know people are busy. And, and if my children could hear me, they would say, well, she should be the one to talk about busyness. But we've got to find little moments. You know, I, I, I encourage people sometimes to park the car a block or two away from your destination. And if you've, you've started it off with that, that moment when you, you understand and you recognize that you're connected to the universe and to the light and to the, and to the love and to the, the streaming of the sunrise and the sunset, and then park that car a block or so away now and get into your stride. So now you're striding with it, if you see what I mean. You're striding with that feeling that you just experienced. And, um, I think that just 10 minutes a day can begin to take us into the real amazing. Once you've had a near-death experience, when you come back, life is amazing. I love it. Thank you for sharing. And I love that idea of parking a little bit further away, taking that time to connect to stride with your mission, to stride with your purpose, to build that in to your daily life, to just make it part of who you are. And, and speaking of that, there's something unique that you do. You always sign everything saying, I am Norma. That's the way I sign my Would name. You share why and what that means and, and why that is important. When I came back from my near-death experience, I came out with heightened senses of awareness. Like for example, when I was leaving the hospital, I stepped out of, they hospitalized me for about nine days after the event. 
And I stepped outside and suddenly I not only saw the trees and the leaves, I saw the light around the trees and the leaves. And I could look all the way down into the ground and see the roots of the trees. And I can actually see how it's pulling the energy from the earth and how that energy was like a vacillating kind of light. It, it was just absolutely amazing, you see. So that, um, I now began to question myself, like, like, who am I? This is not the way I saw things before, you know? I found that my whole, it's like having a near-death experience is what I call a paradigm shift. In a, in a matter of about 10 minutes, everything that you have ever believed on the earth, everything that you have ever known has either got expanded or you've kind of like woken up to the fact that, oh my God, I may have been given some misinformation. You see what I'm saying? So it's, um, it's, this, it's this amazing, it was this amazing world that I'm living in now but I had no real understanding of why is it that my belief systems and what I cared about and et cetera had changed. Seems like it had changed overnight. I had an emergency. I went into a hospital. They took care of the emergency. When I came home, I was not thinking or processing in the same way. And so I began to ask the question, but who am I? You know, I'd look at people now and, 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 and I can see the inner, inner workings of the body. And, and sometimes I can see the beginning of cancer and I don't know these people. And I would scratch my head and think, well, I can't go up to them and say, lady, I think you have cancer. So, you know, I'd, I'd start a conversation and I might say, when was, you know, as women, we really don't take care of ourselves as much as we should. When was the last time you had a, a you visited your doctor and had, you know, and, um, I would encourage them to do that. And occasionally, if we exchange telephone numbers, I'll get a return call that says, oh my God, I'm so glad you said that to me. Do you know what they discovered? So um, I have this big question now about who am I? Why do I know, you know people's diagnosis, et cetera, et cetera? And that began to bother me. And um, when we put questions out into the universe, the universe responds. I got drawn to an elderly couple. He was 90, she was 87. Wisdom keepers on the planet. And I went to him and I asked him the question, well, who am I? What, what have I become? I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not who I used to be. And he took me home to his wife and his wife put me through an exercise that is written in detail in my book, Awakening. She put me through an exercise to help me to understand that the material things that I valued so much was not really who I was, but that who I was was kind of deeply, deeply rooted inside of me and that it would take some exercises and some discipline to be able to bring it out. And part of the exercises I did with them was one which uh, standing out in the, in the open one day, uh, the old man and I were talking, he was talking and I was listening and um, he turned to me and he says, um, do you know your birthright? I said, birthright, what's that? And he says, we have all come into the world with a birthright. He says, and, and I believe that you know, we all know what it is, but we have become so effective at running around with the world's causes and directions, etc., that it gets buried. He said, and today I want us to have a little journey so we can bring it to the forefront. And we were out in nature and he took my hand and we, we walked together and it was almost as though it was choreographed. And um, he kept saying, no, tell me, tell me, who are you? See, I started asking him the question, who are you? Who are you? Now you know it, it's in there, it's in there. And eventually I just whispered the word love. And then he looked me in the eye and he says, no, I want you to look up into the heavens and I want you to scream that word into the world because that's who you are. He said, and every time you put I am 
in front of your name, you are decreeing that you are the light and the love of the universe. And so I sign my name now, I am normal, because I have come to know that I am divinity. My religion told me that I should believe that I, but now I know that I know that I know that I am, I am light, I am love, and I am peace of the energy that is the being we fondly call God, but believe you me, it's not a man. Phenomenal vibrating field of energy and each of us is tied into it. So when I sign my name, I am normal. I am acknowledging my divinity and I'm announcing my divinity to the world. And I encourage others, particularly women, to do the same. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate that so much. And while you were sharing, we got a question for you. Do you mind if I bring it sure. to the floor now? It's, whoop. how do I fully listen to what the universe is telling me? Rhythm. Answer to that question is rhythm. And again, that all that couple, put me into that. He made me walk, take a walk for one year. I had to commit to doing it for one year. The same route, pick a route where there would be a little bit of nature and the same time every day. And I had to walk right through the seasons. Because you see, as we walk, the more we walk, we begin to get in touch with our own rhythm. And whether we can do that for 15 minutes a day or an hour a day, it's, it's kind of irrelevant if we are consistent about walking. And, and I was advised not to walk with music and I'm a music lover. So that was really, really hard for me to do to actually walk without music. Uh, rhythm, we, we get into our walking helps us to get into our own rhythm. And when we get into our own rhythm, particularly when we are in nature, we begin to feel, again, we come back to this word feel. It's not something I read in a book, or you might have read it in a book, but now you're going to feel an experience that that part of you that is connected to nature. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate that. And finding a rhythm, being able to get into that without music, because we have to allow that rhythm <laughs> to, right. That's to right. come forward and through the seasons. Beautiful. Thank you. And for my sharing. grandmother used to say to me, child, you have to learn how to sit in your own rhythm. And I would say, why? And she says, because life is better in your own rhythm. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. I would love for you to share how people can connect with you and go deeper um, as people are pulling out their flower charts and writing down their, their <laughs> final thoughts of what you've been sharing or what's kind of touched the heart and spirit. I'd love for them also to be able to know how to connect in with you. What's the best way? Well, first of all, I have a book out there and that book is called Awakening. Awakening, I, I had a near death experience when I was 26 years of age. And in those days, nobody talked about that stuff because you were too scared to put you in a mental institution. So for about 15 years, I didn't talk about it at all. And then it has taken until I retired before I wrote about it. But it's not just about the experience. It's about the learning curve that took place after the experience. And that learning curve is what took me to a purpose-driven life and was able to help others to be able to travel their own pathways, you know, often I'm asked, uh, what's the difference between religion and spirituality? And um, I don't know, I think maybe my, my answer to that might be a little unique, but all of this has to do with this thing called rhythm. You know, I grew up among athletes, grew up among boys, and I grew up among athletes. And every runner, every track and field person wants to be the person to hold the world record. Her record right now is 9.58 seconds. 
so that you can dash to the, 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 the 100 yard, the 100 meter dash. There are many, many, many um, people out there working with coaches and every coach can coach and is an expert in its own field. But how many people accomplish running 9.58 seconds and holding a world record? That has to do with religion starts off by giving us an idea, some ideas about what's necessary in order to find ourselves. See what I'm saying? Beautiful. You gotta pray. And um, so sorry to, to um, cut you off, but we are getting close on time and I wanna make sure um, people know how to connect in oh, with yeah. you. So if you can let them know how to get your book and um, the best way to connect in, that would be amazing. Well, it's that book is on Amazon, www.amazon.com. You open Amazon. Um, the book is called Awakening. And my name is, is um, Norma, Norma Edwards. But if it's one thing I want uh, to leave today with, you, with your listeners and, and people who are participating, it is time for us to give up the fear, the, the phenomenal fear that we're carrying of death. Because once we can release that fear, that's what happens when you come to a near death experience. When you come back, you have no fear. Once we release that fear, then we stand the opportunity, we stand in that place where we can see ourselves as we are, spiritual beings. And when we see ourselves as spiritual beings, we know that all things are possible. But first we have to work on that removal of that phenomenal fear, unfortunately, that was given to us a lot of the times by religion. Religion is the first step. Spirituality is what it takes to be not just your regular athlete running on a Saturday morning, but the training, the discipline, the, the, the urge, the need, the sacrifice that is put in so that you become the master. So we start with religion and we end with being masters of our own destiny. Thank you. Mm. Thank I you have so a website. Mm -hmm. I have a website and it is um, reprogramyourlife.org. On that website, you will find the, the, the life coach part of me. And I also, of course, have a website for my book, which is awakening-series dot com perfect and there you will find all the information you need Great. but Thank i you. i give you honor of all the work that you're doing in the world particularly to help us as women because you know we, we, we come along we have we need each other's shoulders and support so we can creep out from under what in the past was 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 kind of like accepted as being womanhood. Just you're a woman, you make children, you raise them, you give them to the world. We're now, we're now coming into our own and you're doing a lot to help women walk in their own stride. Mm, to become you. the true I am that they are. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us and sharing your wisdom, not just being a wisdom keeper, but a wisdom sharer. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. <laughs> you can got to share it. <laughs> exactly. It's got to be shared out. And I love that we can come together and collaborate and inspire each other and teach and lead and pass on what we've learned so that we can make the world a better place, heart by heart, life by life. And I love how you claim I am. And so my extra credit bonus challenge that I love all of our viewers to do today and listeners is on your flower chart, take a moment and feel in, what are you claiming I am? And just take a moment and write that down. Don't overanalyze, don't overthink. So what are you claiming today as you write your name? I am. And then what are you claiming? Beautiful. 
Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you sharing, Dr. Norma. Thank you. And um, we're going to take a little bit of a break. I want to give everyone an opportunity to move around a little bit. We have our second half coming, so um, stay tuned. But I want you to be fresh <laughs> and ready to receive and absorb all that we have prepared for you. So we're going to take 10 minutes. So you can get up, move around a little bit, maybe add some notes to your flower chart. Maybe take five of those minutes and write down what's on your heart, maybe what you're claiming. So use this time for you and we'll be back in 10 minutes. So according to my clock, that will be at 11.25 p.m. Pacific time. We'll be back and continue for part two. Enjoy your 10 minutes. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed those 10 minutes, an opportunity to move around a little bit um, so that you're alert and ready for more. It's a great moment to take a look at your flower chart again and just see how that's getting filled in, what insights are popping up. Great time to kind of look back at the beginning when you wrote down your intention, what was on your heart when you took a moment at the beginning of our time together today to feel in and see what was speaking to your heart and to your spirit, what was it that you needed? Great to kind of check in and see how that is moving forward. What's shifting in that for you? What are you leaning into and saying, yes, what are you discovering about yourself? How are you going to step forward a little bit more. What are you going to claim? Are you going to claim your story? Are you going to claim who you are? Are you going to heal and release those things that no longer serve? What are you leaning into to support you on your journey? One of the things as we have been going through a time together that was laid on my heart to share is that each of you are beautifully, powerfully, wonderfully made. And I want to remind you of that. And you're absolutely needed in the world. And if you're feeling that pull on your heart to write your chapter, to write your story, to discover who you are, to share your insight, your wisdom, it's because it's needed. Not someday, but today. It's needed now. Not once you have one more degree or one more certification or one more whatever, then, then you'll show up and you'll share. It's needed now. So I want to encourage you and challenge you to find a way to start sharing now. And one of the avenues that we've created is called the Speaker Talent Search. You can find it at speakertalentsearch.com. And this is part of our giving back to the world. It's an opportunity for you to go through an application process. And if you're selected as a finalist, your information goes before a panel, a group of panelists who are looking for people to have on their shows, to have on their platforms, to share out in the world. So I want to encourage you to check it out. Speaker talentsearch.com. You can even put it on your flower chart on one of the leaves. Like that's a step you're taking away that you are leaning in to stretch out and share your gifts, your talents, your wisdom with the world. So don't just be a wisdom keeper, be a wisdom sharer. We want to get that information out in the world because it matters. It makes a difference. And this is part of our way of helping support that. So speaker talentsearch.com. There's a deadline coming up of July 31st. So this is one of those not someday kind of things. It's one of those things you want to take action now, going to speakertalentsearch.com. I encourage you to write it on your flower as one of the steps that you can take to help you bring your message forward and reach beyond your current circle of influence and touch more people. Because the more people that know about you, that know about your message, your gifts, what you've discovered and learned, the more people we can help. Because if they don't know about you, if they don't hear you, if they don't see you, you can't help them. So I want to encourage you to lean in and find a way to bring your message forward. 
because it's absolutely needed in the world. And you've had lots of opportunities today of different ways that you can get support and different ways you can bring it forward. So I want you to be thinking about those things as we continue our conversation. How can you not only show up fully in your life, but also share out, shine your gifts and talents with the world? Because that's how we make a global difference. Beautiful. Okay. Are you ready for your next amazing speaker? I'm not sure I heard you. Heard you. Are you? Okay, good. I'm seeing hands on our panel here. <laughs> You're experts. Okay. <laughs> we are ready. I'm excited. Looking forward to our next amazing guest. So it's my honor to introduce Dr. Sharon Arundel. She is a native of Jamaica, West Indies. After many years in the fashion business, she pursued a career in counseling. She still carries that great sense of fashion with her, though. Every time I see you, you always have some fashion and flair. I love it. She is the president, CEO of Inspired Wholeness Enterprise, a number one international bestselling author, an ordained pastor, Christian counselor, and inspirational speaker. She has spent over 15 years as a professional professor, professional professor, <laughs> teaching <laughs> graduate and undergraduate uh, materials. She is passionate about helping you become unstoppable. Please lean in. Warmly welcome the powerful and dynamic Dr. Sharon Arndell. Woo! <laughs> welcome. Uh, thank you so much for having me today. Oh, Good you to are be so here. Welcome. Thrilled those, to have those you. women that just spoke, you know, you just um, you just lean in, like you said, and and get what you need. I, even though I am a speaker, I got some stuff as well. So yeah. Oh, I love it. I know I've been taking notes <laughs> too yeah. As, yeah. as everyone mm -hmm. sharing yeah. so much wisdom and insight and mm -hmm. um, heart moving things. Very much so. been sharing, spirit yes. moving. Yeah, absolutely. Well, welcome. We're excited to hear your heart moving and inspirational moving. and <laughs> spiritual yeah. insights and tips for us today. Yeah. But I wanted to start the conversation with why. Why is this work of helping people in this way? Why is that personally so important to you? Um, I guess I could go back to somebody helping me. Um, you know, um, some years ago, it was actually, it was 1999. And um, um, my children and I were in our home and... Um, a hurricane, Hurricane Floyd, swept through New York of all places, you know. We were living in Rockland County, New York, and we were in the basement of the house. And um, it, I saw it, we had a big glass door and the water was going up the door. And I remember, I think I was in shock because I remember standing there going, where is it gonna go when it gets to the top, you know? Um, well, we realized where it was going to go when it got to the top. It came right into our house and um, took everything we owned, but it didn't take us. Um, you know, I swam through muddy, muddy waters with my children and um, we came out of that. And after that ended up in the, you know, the throes of a divorce situation and lost my fashion business and all those things. I call them, um, I call them lemons, right? And we can take them and make just lemonade. Well, I chose to make sweet lemonade and um, I went for counseling myself and um, with my children. And as a result of that, I switched gears from being a fashion designer to being a psychologist and a counselor, who would have thought, you know, never would have thought. Children don't say they wanna be that when they grow up. So um, I chose that path and now I wanna help people get unstuck and become unstoppable. Mm -hmm. Short version, that was the short version. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, um, just beautiful. And I love how, um, it took everything, but it didn't take you no. and your family no. and that you have been inspired to now help others yeah. be unstuck and become unstoppable. So 
those storms of life don't take them mm-hmm. and they can no keep way. stepping forward. Oh, mm-hmm. so thank you for sharing. I appreciate that so much. And I'm so glad that you made the choices you made yes. <laughs> and that we get to, to have you here with us today. And I wanted to talk about how can we become unstoppable when those, when those storms hit, when those challenges come, when that thing that we just don't even know we're in shock watching, like you were in shock watching the water. How do we, how do we get unstuck? How do we keep going? How do we become resilient? Um, for me, um, it was prayer. And I, you know, there's a movie called War Room where she <laughs> literally turns her closet into an open space. Well, my closet was still very full of clothes, but that's where I spent my time. That's where I, you know, my, wherever I found God in the morning and I still find him in that place every morning, regardless of how many um, things and, you know, they still come at you sometimes. And, but the recall is always, that's how I got stronger. And so that's how I became unstoppable. That's where I stayed. Um, that's where I stayed. I stayed on my face. <laughs> um, sometimes um, it was ridiculously hard just to go back to school, you know, mm-hmm. at, um, at 40 years old. And the, that's when all these computers were coming into play. And it was pretty scary. Um, but I made a decision. And when I went back to school, the program was called the EDGE program. And I remember laughing and the advisor asked me why. And I said, because I'm living on the edge and um, stepped in, just stepped in just so I could raise my children. That's what I thought I was doing. Mm -hmm. I thought I was just stepping in so I could raise my children as a single mom. And um, it turns out that that whole education thing became therapy for me. Um, Mm -hmm. It became therapy for me. as I went along from step to step to step, and you've seen them, you see them on my bio. I just keep going to school and people keep going, why you keep going back to school? Um, Because that's where I find my freedom. Um, I find my freedom in knowledge and understanding, Um, not just, I, I, I understand biblical tools. I understand education and I understand counseling. And those are the things that are keeping me thriving, not just surviving. Mm. And that's, that's it. Mm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. I I love that. I think that's um, part of being unstoppable is finding what gives us freedom, what Mm -hmm. pours into us, what makes sense to us and being willing to do that and take mm-hmm. those steps and lean into that support and being willing to live on the edge a little bit. I mean, I think, I think it edge. takes that yes. you know, outside yeah. our comfort zone. kind of. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So anything that, that gave you courage during those transitions, those things that you're doing, going back, living on the edge as you continue to grow and reach out, what helps you find that courage and keep stepping forward? Well, you know, um, Coming up, you know, early in life, my dad used to always say I was a born leader. Um, Well, I think my mom kind of begged to differ, but my dad kept saying it over and over and over and over and over. He kind of instilled it in me. Um, And I, I find my greatest power, and I never thought this would happen because I was a behind the scenes type of girl. I, I, I would peel the potato and, you know, everybody else could be the potato salad, but there's something that happens to me when I take a stage, um, when I stand in front of people, well, in the past two and a half years, I've been sitting somewhat, but just being able to not just stand in a stage to say, I have arrived, but just stand in a stage to let other people, especially women know that there is another side to the story, you know, there is another side to the rough side of the mountain. There's another side to, to what you're going through. There is a, there, if you could just take all of it 
and turn it into stepping stones instead of the stumbling blocks that it wants to be. And so I take, that's where I get my courage when I'm, whether I'm talking just to a woman or I'm just talking to a, a huge crowd or a small crowd or one-on-one, -on -one, courage, the courage is in you and you have to dig deep to find it sometimes, you know? Um, going through, sometimes you go, why me? And we get into that funk and we stay there for so long that we miss so many opportunities to just rise and like you say, um, shine just shine, you know, and, and when you gave that topic, my mind went straight to the blacksmith and, mm -hmm. and the silver, making that silver. And the question is asked, so how do you know when it's done, when I can see my reflection in the, in the silver? And we're all being made, you know, on that potter's wheel. And at the end of the day, it's when I believe God can see his reflection in us. You know, so it's no longer about us. It's about shining, you know, let your light shine is, is what it says. And, and I'm just a firm believer in that and, and encouraging, especially women, you know, we get stuck and we just want to stay in a fetal position if we can and never get up again. But I encourage anybody out there listening to just get up, you know, just stand up. That's the first move. If you can stand up, then you're up, you know, and you just keep on, just keep getting up after that. Mm, beautiful. Thank you for sharing. And I was, I was reflecting on earlier how you also said um, that lemons and you make lemonade, but you decided to make sweet lemonade mm -hmm. that you you're making these conscious choices to look at those just like you're describing that instead of those being stumbling blocks or stepping stones mm -hmm. in that perspective and though there might be that desire to stay in that <laughs> you know covered laying down position mm -hmm. but take that first step to stand like those are all choices that we have and I think it's important to remember that especially in those those challenging moments mm -hmm. that we can stand, we can Absolutely. take a breath, we Absolutely. can keep moving over and we can make not just lemonade, but sweet lemonade. Sweet I'm going to hear your voice <laughs> every time someone says something about lemons <laughs> yeah. or lemonade. I'm going to hear that as, as a reminder. And I'm grateful. That's a gift yeah. to me Yeah. that, you know, not just make lemonade, but I'm going to make sweet lemonade. I'm Sorry for the noise. <laughs> All good. <laughs> it's just for emphasis. <laughs> I didn't get to schedule it with the lawn guy, you know, just, you know. Oh, no, all good, all yeah. good. Yeah. So thank you for sharing. Really, really powerful. And we've got a, a question or two here. So give me one moment so that I'm um, reading this correctly. Oh, so one person was commenting on, on some of what you're sharing, and they were also curious about what gives you strength to stand on that edge, you know, the courage and the strength to do that. And that sometimes they look at why, instead of why did this happen to me, but how, why did it happen for me? So just any thoughts you want to add to any of that? Um, well, it is, it's happening for you, you know, um, that's a great place to start. Um, it's not happening to me it's happening for me. And at the end of the day, you know, when I step out of this situation, even though another one might be coming right behind it, the strength that you receive for one gives you more strength for the next one. And then the next one and the next one, you know? And so I have just chosen to ride it out. <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just going to write it out. And it really start for me, it started with having a very, very important relationship with the Lord. I chose that for me. I chose to say, Lord, I'm your girl, I'm your daughter. And I wanna stay that way for the rest of my life. And I chose that um, and, and, and he showed up on my behalf over and over and over and over and over again. I can't reiterate how often he's shown up in my life and 
even in my counseling practice, I am a Christian counselor. And even though, you know, I went through divorce situations, um, I'm able to salvage, help salvage some marriages in the room. And I recognize that every single time the, the, the counselor in the room is really God, you know, he's just telling me what to ask and what to say to these men and these women about their marriages. And I've watched so many marriages over the years because at the beginning, I didn't wanna be counseling married people because I thought I didn't know what to say. And so um, I've watched so many marriages since then walk out of the room. They walk in sometimes fighting and they walk out, you know, and touch. I could tell when it's happening because their hands start to touch each other and different things start to happen. So at the end of the day, I'm just telling everybody, you know, if, if, if I, this is my testimony, right? I don't know who I'm talking to, but there's a Bible story about the woman at the well. And I put myself in her place every time because she said, come see a man. Come see a man who knew everything about me, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and loved me anyway. And that's who I am, that woman at the well. You know, that he, he took time. He stopped by Rockland County that day and saved me and my children. And he continues to do that because my children are amazing adults. <laughs> And now I have grandchildren and all kinds of crazy stuff happening to me. But I always keep that record in my mind of come see it, come see who did it for me. And I don't mind. I'm not apologetic about what I bring to the stage ever. And so that's what I always bring to the stage. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. I appreciate it. And I'm just kind of reflecting back on all that you've shared. And is there any final thought or share that's on your heart about being unstoppable or taking center stage that you want to share with our viewers today? Um, you know, when you stay stuck, it's hard to become unstoppable because the focus is always you, you know, um, this is happening to me. Um, why does this happen to me? How come I, 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 and if we could just look at it as, oh, so this is happening so that I could help somebody else. How am I going to take all of my lemons, you know, and help other people make sweet lemonade. And I actually wrote a blog called Lemons with Sweet Lemonade. Mm. And it's on my website. And, you know, I would encourage people to just read that blog, you know, just, just read that blog and, 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 um, and embrace it for you, embrace it for yourself. Cause I utilize different people, um, biblical characters to talk about um, the lemons they received and how they took it. My main character was Job, you know, um, all those lemons that he was receiving to the point where he lost some friends, you know, so his friends came along, they didn't get it. My friends came along, they didn't get it. They still don't get it. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, it, and it's 42 chapters. And in chapter 42, you know, is when Job finally said, oh, I get it, <laughs> you know, but in between, he didn't realize he was squishing those lemons and they were becoming sweet lemonade for him on every terrain. And so that's my message. That's my mantra, you know, just go out and do what God has created you to do because somebody said it earlier, you're fearfully and wonderfully made and oh, what a waste of time. You know, I don't think God wastes time but oh, what a waste of time for us if we don't do what we were created and knitted. He took the time to, to do a knitting thing. I crochet, but knitting is so much harder. He took a time 
to just knit us together in our mother's womb. He took the time. It doesn't matter where you were born, even if you were born in jail, even if you were born to a, a prostitution situation, he took the time to knit you together so you could rise and shine, you know? And, and so that's, that's my takeaway. Just rise and shine in the moment. And, um, and you find yourself like me, today becoming unstoppable in this game called life beautiful thank you you're welcome i want to give everyone an opportunity to pull out their flower chart that i hope is getting beautiful and full <laughs> and to take a couple of moments and just write down what's touched your heart and spirit that that dr sharon has shared with us today and just kind of see and with that, as they're writing and reflecting and they have their pen handy, I'd love for you to share your contact information, the best way for them to go deep with you. Um, well, it's www.inspiredwholenesscounseling.com. And there you just see, I, I do have a giveaway. So mm -hmm. it's on that page as well. If you go to the publishing page, you will see that I gave away I wrote a chapter in an anthology, The Fiercely Unstoppable Entrepreneur. That's actually how I re met Rebecca. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I gave my chapter to somebody who needs it. You know, you need somebody who needs my chapter. Go for it. That's my free gift. Beautiful. And they can find that on your website? Yes. Okay. And do you mind yes. giving the website just one more time? It's Inspired Wholeness counseling.com. And if you just want the publishing page, you could put forward slash publications forward slash. And um, to email me, it's inspiredwholeness58 at gmail.com. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing today, Dr. Sharon. I appreciate it deeply. You're welcome. How beautiful. Thank you for having me, ladies. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'm excited to introduce our next amazing guest. And this guest and I have been friends for a lot of years as well. <laughs> Shared many stages and um, events as well. And I love her. I know you're going to love her as well. So I'm so excited. I have like bookends, <laughs> my friends on bookends today <laughs> as we have unfolded and uh, gotten to connect and share today. So it's my privilege and honor to introduce Monica Sawyer. She's known as the Blissful Millionaire. You're going to see she is all about bliss. She reached her financial freedom by turning $10,000 to over 5 million, working only five to 10 hours a month with little stress. So I like that, not only five to 10 hours a month, but little stress too. So she's staying in her bliss. She is a number one international bestselling author multiple times over, top-rated podcast host. She has been featured, featured on stages with Suzanne Summers, Martha Stewart, and Ice Tea and Coco. I didn't know about that one, so it was nice to, to learn that one as well. Um, Harvard, Carnegie Hall, and she's been quoted on NBC, CBS, ABC, and Fox. She is on a mission to help you achieve financial freedom and bliss too. Please lean in and warmly welcome the blissful and dynamic Monica Sawyer. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rebecca. I just have to say one of the your magic talents is bringing together unbelievable women. This has been such a pleasure to meet everybody and to hear these incredible speakers I've gotten so much. So thank you for everybody. And Rebecca, thank you for your magic. My pleasure. And you guys all make it so easy. Honored to have all of you in my circles and excited to share collaboratively and in an inspired way with each other. So thank you, Monica. It's very, very thank kind. Um, excited to have you joining us. And I wanted to start with why this work about bliss and helping people have that and, and have that freedom? Why is that personally mm -hmm. important to you? So it's interesting because there's two pieces to this. There's the bliss piece and then there's the financial piece. I mean, people kind of get confused sometimes about what that, what that means. So 
I'd like to first start with how I'm defining bliss and then hopefully be able to take people into the journey of why this is important to me and hopefully inspire you to look at it yourself. Um, <clears throat> so I define bliss as a deep sense of joy and contentment and the confidence that you can handle anything that comes your way. So it's really about emotional mastery and emotional resilience. And I recently did a TED talk called Who is the Boss of You? And the, the premise of the TED talk is we have a choice of how we're going to live our lives. And we have a choice of who we're going to turn the power of our lives over to. Are we going to turn it over to society? Are we going to turn it over to our parents? Are we going to turn it over to some guy that makes us feel good in the moment? Are we going to turn it over to ourselves? And my wish for each of us is that we choose to turn that choice to our, for, to, for ourselves and that in that choice, we choose a life of bliss. This whole journey began for me when I was in India as a 16-year-old girl, and I suddenly realized what women were treated like there. Um, I'm this American teenager, it's totally headstrong, rebelling against my parents, right? But I had so many rights. I was so supported in making choices. But in women in India, that's not true. For most women, they're married off very young. Their whole purpose in life is to make babies and to support their men. They often get abused. Um, there's horrifying things that happen. And I remember being so distraught at how few choices women had. And so at the age of 16, I decided that I had to, I had to change that. First of all, I was not gonna be that woman. I was not gonna be that Indian woman that had my choices taken away from me. But I also needed to discover how to help those women and all women, because you know what? I saw it in India, but it's everywhere. It just shows up differently. In India, we have arranged marriages without consent. We have something called sati, which is when a husband dies, they throw the, the wife onto his, his cremation fire, you know, without her choice, because she has no value without him. That's how it looks in India. But it looks different everywhere. Women have been, had their choices taken away from them everywhere. And so for me, it's all about how do you have your choice? Now, one of the things that I discovered in India is choice has a direct relationship to our financial freedom. Financial freedom gives us the ability to stand in our power and say, no, I'm not going to do that. I can take care of myself. And so that was one of my own ambitions was I needed to be financially free enough that I could take care of myself. I could stand in my own power. If I got married is because I was in love not because I needed to be taken care of. And I want women to understand you can take care of yourself. There's a lot that you can do and financial freedom will help to support that so you can stand strong and you don't need to compromise on your choices. So what I really want for people is to be able to create a blissful life and to support that and start that to make sure that they're taking care of themselves financially. So that's kind of how that transition happened for me and why I do what I do. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. And that reminder that we give up our choices in different ways and in different parts of the world at different times in our life and that we can claim it back and we can choose. We can always choose what happens to us, but we can choose our response and we can choose yes. to um, create bliss in our life, to be in that state. And I love how you defined it about what bliss is and what it means and it's that choice so tying into that I can see people saying okay that's great when things are happy and Monica you look like a very happy joyful blissful person <laughs> you have that energy <laughs> um what about when it's hard what yeah. about when when it's it's ugly how can we still be blissful how do we do that how do we choose it yeah so first of all, um, for, thank you for seeing me as blissful. I hope I modeled that well. <laughs> but, but it's not always been this way. You know, I grew up in a very, very harsh environment and have been sexually assaulted and had a, an accident where I was 
crippled for 10 years. I could barely walk. So things have gotten hard. I've had 14 miscarriages. Um, things have been hard. So I understand pain. And so I don't want anybody to look at me and say, oh, you're so blissful. It's easy for you, right? No, it's not easy. Have you ever heard the term, your mess is your message? Right? The reason I'm so focused on bliss is because it's been so hard. And so, yes, um, things get hard. Life hands us lemons and all of us don't know how to make sweet lemonade, right? <laughs> So how can we do that? Um, you know, I wrote a book called Choose Bliss, which is a compilation of the strategies that I gave as a coach for 20 years to my clients. They were so, um, they were the most um, productive, the most successful strategies, and I use them in my own life. So you can check that out on Choose Bliss. But I'd like to give everybody um, a strategy today, if you would like, on Fabulous. how in those moments when it's really hard to choose bliss in that moment. Does that sound fun? Sounds blissful. <laughs> okay, good. So let's all do this together. We're going to create a bliss moment. Not that we need it right now because we're already blissful, but we can create a bliss moment in any moment. So this is what you do. Let's say you're in a stressful situation. Um, it could be something that's been carrying on for a long time, right? That you've been dealing with, but it could can also be something that just happens in the moment. I like to give the example of like you got cut off in traffic by a car, right? Because it's an instant and we all have an emotional response that we can relate to in that. Understand that when something happens outside of us, it is simply an event. How we choose to respond to that event is going to determine our bliss. And normally what we do is we start a story in our head, right? Someone cut me off in traffic. They just cut me off in traffic. There's, that means nothing. But what happens in my head is, I can't believe that person cut me off in traffic. What are they thinking? Couldn't they have, thought, like, couldn't, they could have caused an accident, right? Suddenly there's this story that starts to happen in our head. That story is what causes stress. So when something happens, when you're looking for a bliss moment, stop the story in your head. And what I will literally do is either snap, that's my trigger, or I will say, Monica, stop. Literally, stop. And then you take your mind and you move it down into your heart and rest it there in your heart. And then you take three deep breaths in through your nose, have the breath go all the way down and tickle the back of your belly button. And then breathe out through your mouth. One to three. You know, we don't always have the time for three. And notice how much more calm you feel, how the monkey mind has stopped. And now you can respond to life or the situation from this heart-centered space rather than from the crazy story in your mind. So that's how you create a bliss moment. And I just want to say caveat with this. This takes practice. It seems so easy. But most of us breathe so shallowly in our chest. Sometimes we just want to be angry because we have the right. So we don't want to stop it, right? This takes a little bit of practice. So if it doesn't work the first time you use it, it's okay. Practice it. Keep doing it. After 10, 15 times, you'll start to see it's very, very natural. And it's so effective in any situation. I love this. Thank you. You're absolutely right. We just create that story and then we react to that story and then we get upset about the story <laughs> and it's, it's our own creation, whatever the thing is. So I love that reminder that we can stop the madness. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Monica, stop. I like that. I've done that. I've got Rebecca. Time out. <laughs> you know? Hold on. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> and take that breath and feel and shift how we feel, shift our perspective. So powerful. So thank you for sharing. And I appreciate you sharing some of those um, really challenging things you've gone through too, because um, I think it's important people know that, that it's been a conscious choice that, that has been made and that you embody that. Anyone who um, is mo meeting Monica for the first time, I've known her for lots of years. This is Monica. <laughs> so she, she walks her talk, um, but it isn't because the walk's been easy. And I like how you said, because it's been hard 
And so these are conscious choices you've made to navigate that and to choose that. So thank you for sharing a little bit about your journey and bliss and how we can kind of um, experience it more consciously and choosing it. So really, really beautiful. So anything that is on your heart as you're reflecting back on our summit today and all that has been shared, is there something that's just come into your heart and spirit that you want to let our listeners know and our viewers know? I think I've spent so much time over the last six years um, talking about bliss that I, I've experienced my own sense of burnouts and I've worked so hard because I feel so passionate about wanting to ease the pain in the world and one person at a time like just wanting the world to feel blissful you know as much as I can that I've sacrificed myself and I just want people to remember that it's not a linear road this path that we walk when we are searching for those places of joy and light and love in relationships, in our businesses, in our missions, it's not a linear path. And there will be obstacles that come along the way to help to remind you what your mission is, what your priorities are, and to help you to learn new skills to elevate to the next level. And goodness knows, I was actually telling Rebecca recently, I went to Africa and my trip to Africa nearly destroyed my life because because I suddenly realized while I was on vacation amongst the animals without my computer and my phone and my, you know, my friends and all the obligations with all these things as I was out there in the bush, I realized that I was miserable. I'm like the bliss person and I was miserable. How did that happen? And we need those wake up calls because obviously I wasn't aligned. So just understand that bliss really is your birthright. This is something that I was told um, by one of my counselors um, after my car car accident is that we're born as these little bundles of joy and bliss and awe and curiosity, right? And that's bliss. And then we're taught that life is hard right? And we lose that bliss, but that's our birthright. That's how we're born. So bliss is our birthright. We can choose to live it every single day. And in those moments, when you realize that you're not able to choose it, or you're not choosing it consistently for yourself, get back on track, realign, because it's not a linear path. It's the journey that you're going to take. And it will make that feeling of bliss so much deeper, so much more powerful, and so much more resilient. Beautiful. Thank you. And you have a final, we have, we have a question. People are very excited about, um, about bliss <laughs> and they, they want another tip. If they can get another tip <laughs> to refocus on joy and bliss, they're hungry for tips. <laughs> they're hungry for tips. Oh goodness. Okay, good. Let me give you my favorite one. This is the master key to bliss. And you've heard it before. But don't like turn off your ears the second you hear it, okay? Lean in, listen up. It's gratitude. Our our levels of bliss are directly related to how much gratitude we feel and how much time we spend there. So we've all heard about gratitude practices, right? Write down all the things that you're grateful for. I don't know if you know this, but there are ways to do gratitude wrong. You don't want to write down the things that you're grateful for that you're afraid of losing. Mm. Really, really think about that. Don't write down things and then feel fear that you're going to lose it. Instead, focus on the thing that you're really grateful for. Again, drop down into the heart and really feel what it is that you're grateful about that thing and that you have it in this moment, the present of the moment, right? The gift in this moment, what are you grateful for? And now write down all of those emotions, all of those things that make you so grateful for that thing. I could do an example if you like. Would you like an example? Please, that would be great. 
So I sit in my studio, I have a podcast, and this is where I record every day, and I've got my cute backdrop and my lights. And one of the things that I could say is I'm so grateful that I have this studio that's all mine, where I get to share my wisdom with the world every day, right? I'm so grateful for that. If I drop into my heart, I would say, I'm so grateful that I have this comfortable, stable chair underneath me that holds me up so that I can sit in my power and impact the world. I'm so grateful for this computer that allows my voice to reach hundreds of thousands of people every single week. I'm grateful for lighting so they can see me, so I can impact them in a different way. I'm so grateful for my cup of water that hydrates and nourishes me. And I'm so, so, so grateful for this mic that allows the world to hear my voice. And most of all, I'm so grateful for the people that are willing to listen and have bliss in their own lives. A little bit different way of doing gratitude, don't you think? So yeah. that is the master key to bliss, is to really, really live gratitude. Hmm. Powerful. Thank you so much. I'm grateful for you <laughs> and your sharing <laughs> and your commitment to helping us choose bliss and align and more fully with our true selves in life. So I, I appreciate that. And I'd love for you to share your contact information so people that want to go deeper can. And I know you have a beautiful gift as well. I so I'd do. love for you to share both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the best way to find out all about me is to go to blissfulinvestor.com. So it's blissful because you want to be blissful. Investor. <laughs> <laughs> dot com. Um, and there you'll see my flagship book, Choose Bliss. You scroll down to the bottom so you can see Choose Bliss and my other books. Um, and you'll also get to see my podcast. You get to see the TEDx talk, who's the boss of you. So there's all of that there. If you would like a free chapter of the book, you can go to choosing your bliss. Dot com And you know what? I just want to verify that that's actually correct. It is choosing <laughs> your bliss <laughs> dot com. So you can get a free chapter of the book if you would just like to start there and see if the book is even of interest to you. So those are the two places to go. Blissfulinvestor.com for the TED Talk, as well as to get the book if you would like. And then choosing your bliss dot com for a free chapter of the book. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Monica, for sharing, bringing your beautiful, blissful energy <laughs> to our <laughs> summit and all that are, are tuning in. I so appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, Rebecca. I'm super honored. Thank you. Our pleasure. And I just want to thank each and every one of our amazing panelists and experts who've leaned in to bring their energy, their heart, their spirit their wisdom as we started kind of behind the scenes before we hit go live button we were talking and one of the things we were all leaning into is collectively connecting breathing in trusting that we had prepared and that we were going to allow what was called forth to unfold so that we could serve at the highest level so I hope that you have felt that during our time together that you listeners have been served and I want to thank you for tuning in our listeners and our viewers, depending on how you take in information the most, that you felt that care and that trust and that love and that support for us because, and from us, because we believe in you. We know you're needed in the world and we're here cheering you on, supporting you. We would not have been able to do today in the way that we're able to without you. With your, we've had your likes, we've had your loves, your hearts, you're cheering us on, your beautiful comments and your questions. And um, thank you for engaging and really being part of making this event so special. I want to encourage you to lean in and connect with our amazing experts. They gave you their information on purpose. They are sincere in reaching out to you and wanting to support you on your journey. Look at your beautiful flower chart <laughs> that you have created during our time together, I hope you filled it in beautifully, that your intention and need that you said at the beginning of our time together today has shifted forward in a positive way. 
that you've actually even filled in the leaves on two things that you're going to do to step out into the world a little bit more, to bring in support. And I want to invite you today, we're ending a little bit early. Guess what? That's on design and by pur on purpose, because this now gives you some time to be present, to enjoy the gift of now, to take in the information that have been, has been shared with you. So don't just run off and jump right back into the day. Take these next 10 to 15 minutes for you. It's a gift, just like you're a gift. Take this information in. Take some time to be, to find that rhythm. If it's time to take those lemons and make sweet lemonade, what is a step? If it's time to, to drop into your bliss, take a moment and do that. Maybe it's the five minutes to start writing. Maybe it's tapping into your woo and bringing some of that energy in. Whatever it is, this is your time. I want to encourage you to fully use it, to fully embrace this experience. And I just got a reminder that I promised I would let you know where you could send me, you could request the flower chart. So if anyone wants the flower chart, <laughs> I want to make sure I'm honoring what I said I would do. You can send me an email at Rebecca at your purpose driven practice.com Rebecca at your purpose driven practice.com and ask for the flower chart and I will be happy to send it to you. We've also launched a new show series, which I'm very excited about. We're in the first month of it called the ask Rebecca show. So if any of you ever had questions you always wondered and wanted to ask either of me or in the business or what we've discovered and learned, you can submit a question there. You simply go to askrebeccaaquestion.com, askrebeccaaquestion.com. And if you want a little visibility, guess what? You can say, check the box that says you can say my name and business name, and we will do so on air when we lean in to answer your question. So just another way we can support you and help you continue to shine, continue to share your gifts and talents out in the world. And I haven't asked. I would love to see your flower chart. You could email it to me at that same email, Rebecca at your purpose driven practice.com, or you could post it in social media and tag me. It would just be so wonderful to see the garden all of our flowers growing and all the ways that we are stepping forward and shining and sharing our gifts. And then we can more personally cheer you on. So it'd be an honor. We'd love to see your flower chart. You can take a little picture and post it. That would be amazing. And take these minutes, these time, these 10 to 15 minutes, they are especially made for you. Keep sharing, keep shining, and we'll look forward to talking to you next summit. Take care, everyone. Bye.